on podcast Matthew and Mandy with their friends Catherine and Kelly. Enjoy our Christmas podcast. Enjoy our Christmas podcast. So it seems there's another verse. I only sing the first I need more lyrics for this song Not sure how long I can go on Let's try to hear the final note I'll try to hear the final note Ah, hello and welcome. Mandy and I are just enjoying some time by the fire, talking about our favourite season, Christmas. Please, stay a while and listen. We have large and comfortable chairs by the fire for you, and your favourite winter drink is on the counter. I'm enjoying a rum old-fashioned. Mandy, what are you enjoying? I am drinking hot apple cider. Mmm, nice. It is very nice. We know Christmas can be a busy time full of travelling, shopping, gatherings, traditions and non-optional social conventions. But there's a lot about the season to enjoy. Mandy, you've told us a bit in the past about you love Christmas. What about Christmas do you like so much? Oh, I think the shorter list is what don't I love about Christmas. (laughs) Christmas is... It's just a wonderful, magical, beautiful time of celebration. And it's a time to get together with family and friends, and it's a time for giving, even um, without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love it. I love cooking for my family. I love putting lights up. I love sitting in a dark room with only the lights of my Christmas tree in, in the house. And it's just beautiful and wonderful, and I love it. Nice. I used to like that, that the having just the lights over the mantelpiece or the Christmas tree on or something, until Nintendo released the Wii. And because the Wii motion sensors use infrared to pick up where they were, we had lights that appeared to give off <laughs> infrared. And there was one year where they were flashing. So it, like you'd be playing something going, why is this controlling so bad? <laughs> Turned out it was the Christmas lights, so... <laughs> And so apparently the Wii was more important than the Christmas lights, is is what I'm hearing from you. (laughs) Okay. That very much says to me you like the Christmas season, not even just the day of Christmas or the kind of the religious festival or anything like that. It's everything that goes around it. Oh, absolutely. Christmas starts on November 1st for me and it runs (laughs) until after New Year. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Christmas Day itself is the one that has all the tradition and things that that have to happen. Is there is there a, a, an order to the day for you? Is there a Christmas Day that is that is what I expect to happen and what makes it good? Uh, there is. It, it's a little bit different now than from when I was a kid. Uh, mm. Now I am the person who hosts Christmas dinner for mm. my mom's side of the family, and so what happens is uh, my mom actually comes and spends Christmas Eve night with me. And Christmas Eve night, we make the desserts that we're going to have at dinner the next day. And okay. she and I go ahead and do um, like our Christmas stockings and things like that. And then on Christmas morning, we wake up and my mom and I do our special Christmas together. Mm-hmm. And then we put the turkey in and we kind of plan out when all of the dishes need to be prepared and do all of the chopping and things like that. And we listen to Christmas music or if we have enough time because, you know, something's in the oven and we don't actually need to be actively chopping or stirring. We'll watch some movies. Generally for her, it's going to be catching up on Outlander or Doctor Who. Okay. (laughs) And then uh, once everyone arrives, we have dinner. After dinner, we do presents and then we just enjoy each other's company until everybody decides they want to get home before dark. Oh, nice! You do you do presents after dinner? We do. How very civilized! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's usually because 
they don't get to my house. This year, it's going to be around one in the afternoon, and I'm going to be hungry, and like dinner is ready at one. And right. so I want them to sit down and eat while it's fresh and hot and still good and not have to wait and like reheat things and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, you said you make desserts with your mom on Christmas Eve. Yes. What are the desserts? Are there staples each year that you have to have? Uh, the only staple we have to have is because it's my mom's favorite, and it's not a traditional Christmas dish at all, is uh, we make tiramisu. Mm -hmm. Nice. We started doing this a couple years ago. I, she discovered this dessert and decided it was her favorite thing in the whole world. <laughs> I happened to find a recipe for it one year, and I made it. And she just basically said, okay, we're doing that every year now. <laughs> so she is in charge of that. I make sure to buy all of the ingredients. And then when she's at my house on Christmas Eve night, she is in charge and she makes it. And honestly, she and I are the only two who eat it. <laughs> Everybody else thinks it's weird. Oh, she is going to have a good time in the UK because every <laughs> Italian restaurant, that is the dessert. It's, it's oh, on, yeah, no, she would love menu. it. Yeah. <laughs> I make a nice one with Bailey's. Oh, that sounds nice. Mm, it's quite good. And, and a, a you might have coffee. to send me your recipe. Yeah, we use coffee, and then I go buy a two dollar bottle of Madeira wine from Trader Joe's. Ooh, yum! <laughs> so, yeah, um, and then everything else is just whatever I decide to make. Last year, I made bite sized lemon curd bites. Hmm. You know, I think this year my granny's making cupcakes. And so everything else just kind of rotates with what people decide they want. Okay. But the tiramisu is the one thing we have to do every year. Awesome. Does she get it at other times, not just Christmas? Only if she goes out to eat at an Italian restaurant that has good tiramisu. Right. And she's she's pretty picky about it. So she'll try it everywhere. But she remembers which ones she likes and which ones she doesn't. <laughs> and And so it's not often that she gets a really good one. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, Matthew, th that's my very kind of out-of-the-ordinary Christmas Day tradition. So what do you guys do in the UK? What does your family do? What do you expect Christmas Day to look like? Um, so, obviously, like, like you, it's a little bit different as an adult than it was as a kid. Um, although not hugely. My, my fiancé and I, we alternate families. So this year we're, we're with my family. Last year we were with, with her family. Um and by and large, it's uh, get up and have champagne and croissants, something on those lines for breakfast, Ooh. whilst doing stockings. So generally, whoever's in the house, um, because we now have my niece and nephew, I think one year we waited for everyone to get together, but usually it's been uh, stockings in your pyjamas and dressing gowns and, and a, a little bit of watching what other people are doing, but generally around the same time, you're just sort of opening things and laughing at them or saying thank you or having a joke or trying things out. Um, my my mum is very good at having these are the things that go in a stocking, so she makes sure she takes them off every year, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Uh, the, I, like I always got, you know, some deodorant, a book, a magazine, some chocolate, maybe a beer as I grow up, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Nice stuff. <laughs> uh, then Christmas, I uh, just showers and getting ready for the day other family come over if if there is other family to come over depending on where we are and going into dinner my mum's my christmas dinner is a, a huge spread of all different sorts of food um obviously turkey and brussels sprouts lots of uh, potatoes and parsnips and stuffing some vegetables uh, she does this nice sausage onion mustard thing that's lovely we have um what i think you'd call a pig in a blanket so little sausages wrapped in bacon. Okay. That's not what a pig in a blanket is. But oh, is it not? That sounds oh. delicious. What's a pig in a blanket? Uh, a pig in a blanket is a sausage or um, like a small cocktail wiener wrapped in a croissant type breadish oh, thing. Okay. So a very small toad in the hole, effectively. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> toad in the hole is sausages baked in... Uh, batter, effectively. Sort of thing you might use oh. for, um, like, a non-sweet pancake. Okay. Hmm. Similar. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have uh, what are very small, like you say, cocktail uh, sausages wrapped in bacon. And they're 
usually quite tasty. They go down very well with the kids, I'll tell you that for a fact. Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, because they're so munchable. Oh, mom, mom, oh, mom, mom. Uh, Brussels sprouts are a very big Christmas tradition over here. Uh, you don't have them too much at other times of the year, but, but Brussels sprouts are definitely a thing that go with Christmas. Uh, and then you move into the cake section where we, we have a lot of tradition over our cakes and desserts. Between Christmas pudding and Christmas cake and Yule log and for me Tunis cake and mince pies and uh, brandy butter and custard and there was basically a whole sequence of these things. My goodness. Mm. I, like, you, I'm hearing you say cake, 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 custard, cake. cake. Yeah. Like, you might have seen <laughs> a couple of people talking on Twitter about um, <laughs> boiling their cake in uh, brandy or soaking it in alcohol months ahead of Christmas. So that is part of the thing. You oh make my. this you make this fruit pudding cake, effectively, that you soak in alcohol, like a bottle of alcohol, and then you soak it in another bottle until it all takes it in, and then you boil it for a bit, and then you set it alight and serve it. <laughs> And do people live through this without getting alcohol poisoning? They do, because a lot of it has been boiled or, or, or baked off, but it is potent. Um, okay. And then you serve it with brandy butter. <laughs> Christmas is quite a so, boozy time. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like you guys really do Christmas well over there. Mm, yes. Uh, obviously, we are uh, we're very privileged and come from um, families that, that do the big Christmas, so uh, it's very nice, but... Uh, these are the sorts of things you would read in Charles Dickens or be referenced uh, as part of the tradition. It's lovely. It sounds lovely. And then, it's definitely different than Christmas is experienced in my mm. life anyway. Yeah, the, the, the other staple is then the turkey lasts for a very long time. So you then make uh, turkey shepherd's pie, which is turkey with mashed potato and gravy and things on it um and uh turkey curry or turkey sandwiches or you're eating turkey for several days alongside all the cake yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) do you have a a way of using up the turkey after the dinner we do uh my mom and i use it to make turkey salad Mm. which is chicken salad just using turkey instead of chicken (laughs) right and honestly it's so good it is so much better than chicken salad and i forget that every year until we get to thanksgiving because we do turkey at thanksgiving and christmas and my family and so i get it both uh, times course, and like the, yeah. the day after thanksgiving i get my turkey salad and then that's all i eat for like three days <laughs> nice. and then i'm like oh my gosh that's delicious i can't wait till christmas <laughs> <laughs> i saw three ships come sailing in on christmas day on christmas day i don't know why i'm by this dock on christmas day in the morning okay there is one other thing in the uh, british christmas dinner that i need to talk to you about okay and, and this is christmas crackers so I, I i'm fairly sure these are not an american thing oh not at all i've seen them in doctor who okay so <laughs> it's really hard i've been talking to friends about this i can physically describe a christmas cracker i'm not sure i can describe why so you might have to bear with me. Um, okay. Christmas crackers are maybe a foot long, although they come in different sizes. Um, but it's a tube that is cinched about a fifth of the way in at either end. Um, and, and the point is you and your neighbour on the table or a friend or someone who's near you each sort of grab the cinched ends and pull. And the cracker will split... And one of you will end up with the majority. One one of you will end up with basically just the bit you were holding. Okay? Okay. Okay. It, through the cracker, there is a strip of card, which is held together in the middle with effectively a, a popper. Like kids might have that they throw that makes a cracking, popping type sound. Okay. Yeah? So that when you pull it, it goes bang! And then inside the tube, you have several staples. So one of them is not not an actual staple, a thing that is regularly there. (laughs) Um, You have a crown, a paper hat or a tissue hat that you have to put on and you have to wear through the meal. That is what you do. It is the done thing. Okay. You have a toy or knickknack of some sort. And this this very much varies depending on the quality of your uh, your crackers. Because sometimes you will get a very small notepad or something. Some uh, there, there are a few things that are sort of famous for being a bit rubbish. A little like plastic frog that when you 
push it down, it hops away. Or like a, a square that's been cut up into triangles and you have to reform it into a square. Or you know, rings that are linked and you can do a magic trick to unlink them. But you do get good ones that have like, oh, a little screwdriver set. Or, or a compass. Or <laughs> uh, random trinkets. <laughs> See, and I'm sitting here thinking I'd rather have the jumpy frog or the, you know, the square cut up into pieces. Yeah, they're, they're good fun when you're five. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um, I'm still five. Maybe you are. And you also get, this is this is pretty much the thing with the cracker. It makes a noise, you get a silly hat, you get a little toy, and you have a joke. There are There is a, a printed bit of paper with a joke on inside every cracker. And these are generally to do with Christmas, but not always. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Matthew. What do angry mice send each other at Christmas? I have no idea. Cross mouse cards. <laughs> That's cute. That's the sort of joke you get in a cracker. That that was from my fiance Catherine. So thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's. They are a weird tradition. I have no idea where they came from. They are just a bit of fun. They are a bit of table decoration that you enjoy at the beginning of a meal. And quite often you try to do it like everyone at the table has one. So you take the cracker in your right hand and offer it to the person on your left. And you you then take in your left hand the cracker from the person on your right. So you're pulling across yourself two crackers at the same time. Okay. It's good fun. And it goes bang. (laughs) That sounds like a really nice tradition. I'm... I'm actually curious why we don't do that here, but I'm actually not now because I just looked it up on Wikipedia and they date back to the 1840s, which is, you know, after we had already decided right. you guys suck and became our <laughs> own colony. So, you know, we, we decided to revolt and so we don't get Christmas crackers. I'm I'm surprised as well. They are such a, a bit of fun and I have seen them spread that you can get you can get them for weddings and you can get them for uh, Valentine's Day and things like this. I mean, people don't, but you can. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, oh, I think it's great. Hmm. I actually spoke to Catherine a bit earlier because they have a slightly different tradition. So I'm going to pass over to that conversation now and we'll hear what, what they do about it. So hello, Catherine, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Matthew. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. God bless us, Governor. <laughs> um, Mandy and I are enjoying a nice conversation about Christmas hey. and our favourite traditions and uh, our past with it and why we love it. You and I have quite similar Christmases and mm. Christmases that we grew up with, I think. Yeah, I think so. I well, I suppose I consider my Christmas quite a traditional English Christmas. Admittedly, when you came up to spend the first Christmas with my family, <laughs> I realised that we did have a number of family traditions that perhaps yes. were not as normal as I thought. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically standard family British Christmas. Nice. Is there something about Christmas that you particularly enjoy, or time with the family? That's something that when you think of Christmas, you go, "That's one of my favourite bits about it." I think I enjoy the fact that there's no pressure to be elsewhere Mm. and that you are there in your family group, you're at home, you have quite a relaxed day, you have good food, everyone's generally in a good mood, you exchange presents and I enjoy the opportunity to play games together as Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, yeah, so it's just somehow in the hustle and bustle of normal day-to-day life, there never seems to be time to sit down and play games together. But Christmas Day is almost like the rest of the world has pressed pause, right? And suddenly there's space for for that time. Nice. Yeah. So it's it's a, a very different day to most other days of the year. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The you you say that there are a couple of things that I pointed out that were different. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you about and, mm. and to talk about your family traditions that are, that stood out to me. The the you know the enjoying a lot of alcohol and eating a lot together. That's pretty much a staple. But there, there were two particular ones. Um, the first is the stockings. Mm. So we do Christmas stockings as well, but you have a very particular way that you do it in your family, which I like so much, I introduced it to my family afterwards. Yeah, I think, I think my family love giving and getting gifts. Yes. Uh, I mean, not the... Pretty, pretty much most people do, really. <laughs> but uh, I think my family take it to... Not ex... <laughs> no, I, I will say, 
we take it to excess. Um, <laughs> and so also and we, we really have a thing about liking to watch people open. The yes, gifts yes, as well. you do. Uh, <laughs> so a few years ago, my mum, who used to be so my mum used to do stockings for myself, my sister and my dad and dad would do a stocking for mum. And a few years mm. ago, my mum was like, hang on a minute. I want to see I want more surprises in watching people open their stockings. And also, I think I want a better class of stocking. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't get me wrong, Dad does all right, but not amazing. Yeah. Um, he, so Yeah, I, I always got the impression he did a, an hour's walk around the town. Uh, one thing in every shop. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and and Mum was also quite rightly saying, Well, Jenny Catherine, you earn money now. Yeah. Get involved. So fair. Which is yeah. fair. <laughs> you know. So now the way we do stocking is each person buys three or well, four gifts, I think we went to. No, we went to three because you joined us. It was four. Oh. Four before you oh, okay. uh, Yeah, we went, we went to three because you could we thought four with with a Matthew involved in this could get completely ridiculous <laughs> as opposed to semi ridiculous. <laughs> So each family member gets three items for every other family member's stocking. Right. Um, and so everyone has got a stocking full of full of fun little gifts yeah. from everybody else. Nice. And we sit and we drink champagne and we watch people go round and everyone takes one thing out of their stocking and opens it and we have a bit of examination and chat about that and, and then we move on around and basically this takes pretty much all of Christmas morning. <laughs> oh God, at least the morning. I think, I think yeah, the introduction of a fifth person to that yes. might have extended it more because uh, certainly the couple of times we've done it with them, it's been, you start off, then you take a break to go and do something in the kitchen to top mm. up the champagne. Oh, now we need to have some food, so let's yeah. let's grab a bit of a bite to eat, and then let's come back to it. Mm. And <laughs> but I, I think um, I think I enjoy the stocking presents mm. more than the quote unquote main. Present oh really? Because I think there's there's a lot more scope for something unexpected mm. um, and a bit fun and and. For the most part, you try or we try to get things that we think the other person would would like or would make them laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with the lower budget, that means that you're sort of yeah. looking around slightly slightly wider for those things. Whereas certainly in my family, often the main present that you get for someone is not a surprise. Yeah, because we we would we do quite a good job in going. Yes, I would like this. Yeah, and then that that is bought. <laughs> <laughs> But but it is nice. So everyone ends up with the same amount of things in the stocking. You go around in sequence, and and you you are all partaking in what everyone gets. Yes. And and it is a very, it's a nice, warm, loving environment to do that in. Yeah. It's it's such an enjoyable thing. As I said, I introduced it to my family, and we did it with them, and it was a lot of fun. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. The the other bit is the present basket, <laughs> yeah. which just came out of nowhere that first year. I was just suddenly. What is this thing? Why did no one warn me about it? Why have I not introduced anything to this? I feel so awkward. I do not know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm so Cause, sorry. Because all I'm ever looking for in life is to know what's going on and do the right thing, <laughs> frankly. Um, so, so basically the answer is next time you come up for Christmas with my parents <laughs> is wrap up a lot of cheap tat and add it to the present basket. <laughs> so what's the origin of the present basket? The origin of the present basket is every thought crackers are... Fun, but contain tat. Right. And also, you get one cracker. And we like lots of presents. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, this is the present basket is an alternative to crackers. Right. And everyone, or mainly my mum, because my mum just has a lot of random tat hanging around the house. <laughs> um, but like everyone will contribute some cheap, very cheap items. Yep. It could be like a pack of silly tissues or a roll of sweets or something like that, wrap them up, pop them in the present basket, mix them up. And then after, uh, well, I would say after, after, uh, after every meal, at least once the present basket goes around the table and it's a bit like a lucky dip. You close your eyes, grab something that takes your fancy out of the present basket and much like the stockings, everyone watches you unwrap it and we examine what it is you've got and and (laughs) laugh about it. Yeah. Nice. It it is nice. It is fun. Is that all that why... Oh, I don't even know how to ask it. Is is that just why you went for not crackers? I think so. There's no actual, oh, we don't like crackers because of a reason. It's just, if it's going to be tat, it's going to be tat that we've bought 
and have a laugh about rather yeah. than a hoppy frog and a little moustache. I think so. And I honestly, I don't know. I think my mum came up with it the first time. Okay. And then... W- when? Oh, gosh, it was a while ago now. I mean, it was. It, this is not something from my childhood. It right. has been after after I've left home. Okay. So this is... Me, me, let, Let's say it's been the last 10 years. Okay. Like one year, my mum just came up with it and she was like, I decided we're not going to have crackers this year. We're going to have the present basket. Right. And, and, and that year, the number of presents in the present basket was sensible. Right. The next few years, it's just got more and more ridiculous to the point where we're desperately passing the basket around the table four times. Yeah, on the 28th on the of December. On the 28th of December <laughs> going, come on, Catherine's about to go back to London now. We need to finish the present basket. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's just because everyone wants to contribute. Yeah. Uh, so, so it may be the time that you first experienced it and came up. I didn't bother putting anything in because I knew there was way too much right. random tat in there anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's very fun because I, I've gotten some very silly stuff out of that over there and, and some nice stuff, some nice sweets and alcohol and, and random things. But I've also gotten a face towel in the shape of a dinosaur or um, a, a very sparkly, glittery teddy bear key ring yes. <laughs> and random things like that. So it is it is just silliness Yes, um, that just gets passed around at every single meal. Yes. Good fun. Yeah. So we will be doing that next year i think when we share it with your family quite possibly yeah, absolutely again so we'll report back to everyone what we uh, what we get from it <laughs> what random tat is this year <laughs> so i will let you get on your way uh merry christmas and thank you very merry much for christmas. joining us <laughs> thank you guys bye so yes they do some good fun different traditions in their family uh that are a bit different than the, the way other people do them which i like it's it's nice to find out these differences between us yeah, one thing that we do, so I go see my dad's side of the family on Christmas Eve. Mm. We've always done my grandma's house on Christmas Eve, and that was because that was when all of the grandkids could get together to see her, and then on Christmas morning, we would all be with our families. Right. And so when we were young, all of the kids got gifts and presents, and as we've gotten older and the family has grown, there's now often anywhere from 20 to 25 people there, and it's just you know, unsustainable to give gifts to 25 people every year. And so now all of the young kids always get a gift from everybody. And then what everybody else does is we all buy a $10 gift and we essentially do, a, it's a white elephant or a dirty Santa. It's wrapped. We put them all in the middle of the room. We draw numbers and then you just pick mm-hmm. one of the gifts. You open it in front of everybody and then the next person goes and they can either steal that gift from the first person or pick another gift from the pile. Okay. And so we always have a lot of fun with that and it it ranges from you know, candles or candy toolboxes or tools. One time my uncle decided to be silly and he built a, a shoebox kit full of things like rubber gloves and hemorrhoid cream. Okay. <laughs> you nice. know, and, and so sometimes you can get a really nice gift and sometimes you can get a really, really silly gift. But, you know, we always have a lot of fun with it. Do you do, you do any embellishments on it of you can steal other people's gifts? Yes. Um, each gift can be stolen three times. Well, tw- I guess twice. So the okay. third owner of the gift, that gift is locked and stays there. Uh-huh. Um, otherwise, it would go on forever and ever, and we would never get through all of the gifts. Right. I, I've done a version of that at work for a secret Santa where you could steal them. And, and it was really problematic because there was a, a lottery ticket in there. <laughs> yes. So everyone was, was was swapping that round for a bit. And then it ended up winning like £10. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Do you, do you do a secret Santa at work? Do you do presents at work at all? Uh, we don't do an organized thing um, mm. with everybody. I do buy gifts for my direct reports okay. just because giving gifts is something I love to mm-hmm. do. And uh, but, but we don't do anything as a unit together other than we get together and the office pays for dinner for everybody. Nice. That's good. I've I, I've done the same when I've managed people. And usually, again, the sort of cycling of like, okay, this year everyone can have a mug, and this year everyone can have some chocolate, and this year everyone can have some alcohol, if appropriate for religions, Um, and that kind of thing. That sounds so much easier than what I do. Do I actually tailor the gift to every single person, which is really hard when you've got somebody who's only been working there for like four months. Yeah. (laughs) But I do my best. You're very nice. (laughs) We, We do a secret Santa as well. 
Uh, I've gotten some terrible presents over the years. Like each year now, I'm like, guys, just chocolate and biscuits. <laughs> Stick with oh. it. <laughs> One year, I got a book called The Selfish Pig's Guide to Caring. Oh, that sounds fun. Which, which, yeah. Uh, it, it didn't go down so well when I sat in the middle of the office and started reading from it. Because it, it's effectively, it's a book about... Um, uh, it's kind of self-help book for people who have to care for a relative. Oh. That sort of thing. Uh, at the end of the story is that the lady who'd bought it for me was a bit hungover and thought the title was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't actually know this. But yeah, I sat in the thing reading from this book. Especially the chapter that is how to deal with when you want to push them down the stairs. <laughs> okay, see, I think that's hysterical. It was just so random. <laughs> she she felt very bad and bought me a pint at the bar later. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> Deck the halls with bells of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Done we now our gay heads a heads. Fa la 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 la. Shut the door to keep out pair heads. Fa la 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 la. Okay, so that's a lot about Christmas itself. Uh, the day, the the day after Christmas. That's not anything for you. That's just the twenty sixth of December. That is a shopping day when everybody goes to return all the gifts they don't want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the years of buying the right cable or the right adapter or... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because mm. we have Boxing Day. Okay, now I've, I've always heard this term, but mm. I have no idea what Boxing Day actually is. Um, uh, historically, it's the day that... Oh, I think it's particularly... The lords would give boxed presents to their servants or staff. If you picture a, you know, a Downton Abbey or a Pride of Prejudice type situation, or even Christmas why Carol. Don't they, why don't they get them on Christmas? Because they're with their families on Christmas, and then they go back to work and get presents from the boss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but now it is just Boxing Day, and it's usually a follow-up. Uh, like you were saying about going to see the other family if you hadn't seen all of your family, or catch up with friends. Or the Boxing Day sales. So you go to the shops and buy the batteries or the adapters or return the present that you didn't like so much. Or it's in the wrong size. Or buzzes and it shouldn't buzz. Okay. Hmm. So it's not not too dissimilar, but we actually have a name for it. (laughs) Everything is so much more formal over there. Clearly. Um, (laughs) The the season as a whole. Uh, One of the things I do know about you is that you like Christmas movies. I do. And, and we, we've talked about that, and you've been having a, a lot of fun watching the Hallmark and uh, Netflix movies for Christmas. Yes. The the other thing going along with that, though, is you like your Christmas music. I do. Are there any particular songs, any favourites? Is there something you have to get up and do at karaoke this time of year? Okay, well, I've never actually gone to karaoke, so okay. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but my, my favorite song, so I, I split my Christmas songs into secular songs and religious songs Mm. for Christmas. And so my favorite non-secular or religious traditional Christmas songs are going to be, um, O Come All Ye Faithful. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the the other one is not actually traditional because it's, it's very new. I think it was written in the nineties. It's a song called Mary, Did You Know? Mm. And it's a beautiful, beautiful song, and there's a particular version of it that I like the best, although I do like all of them. And you may laugh at me when I tell you this, because the version that I love the best is by Kenny Rogers. Okay. (laughs) It's just so good. It's so good. And then uh, secular songs, or or the non-religious ones, that, that list is generally much longer because they're just also fun. Um, but if I had to narrow it down, I would say Sleigh Ride and I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas nice. are my two top, <laughs> top favorite songs. Are they on every Christmas playlist? Yes. Great. And in fact, I think I have no less than four different versions of Sleigh Ride on my Spotify Christmas playlist. Mm. I tried this year to narrow my playlist down to just kind of pick the best version of all of the songs. Otherwise, it would just have 50 bajillion songs on it. But when it came to Sleigh Ride, I mean, you just, you have to have the instrumental version. 
you have to have the Amy Grant version. You have to have the Ronettes version. You know, so there's just all on there. I think the only version I have is uh, by a singer called Suggs, who was the lead singer of Madness. Have you ever heard them? No, I have not. Uh, British ska band. You you will probably have heard some of their stuff. I, in fact, I think they've got a song in Love, actually. Um, okay. Hmm. But he did a very nice version of it. Okay. I, I may have to go look that one up because yes. I'm always here for a good version of Sleigh Ride. <laughs> Um, I, I know that that I've I've seen your Christmas playlist and mm-hmm. it's a little untraditional. So, will you tell us about the songs that you love to listen to the most? Yeah, I I like a, a twist on a, an original song. So some of it might just be uh, the Pupini Sisters who do really nice uh, female harmonies of some of the songs. Uh, she and him who do some of the sort of hipster takes on some of these things. A little bit too hipster for my liking sometimes, but some of them are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob Dylan singing in Latin. <laughs> and, um, what is it? Adeste Fidelis. Um, but you do need to talk about that one group, the amateur, whatever, Watsy folks, people. I, yes. Then there is the completely non-traditional ones. So particularly, I think what you enjoyed was the amateur transplants, who yes. um, have taken Christmas songs... And put their own lyrics on them. And in some places, it's really quite funny. It's very silly. Um, they do a song about the wise men bringing presents to Jesus to the tune of gold, but they don't talk about the gold. <laughs> Which is a slightly deep cut, but it but it's very good. Um, <laughs> but they also do... It's the most wonderful time of the year, but actually about how terrible the time of the year is when you have to deal with family and how bad everyone is. They do one about trying to light a gas fire, and eventually it goes, but Santa's coming down the chimney, and now he's dead. Oh. <laughs> um, bits of beard and chunks of kidney. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's it's awful. a little graphic. Um, they do feed the world, but about girls with anorexia. Which is really dark, but really funny. I feel a little bad when I have to laugh at it, but it, it is very good. I, I think I'll, I'll share my playlist, but it is called Christmas for Adults. Because some of it should not be listened to around a child. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there is one kind of alternative song like that that I like. Mm-hmm. It's um, a parody of the 12 Days of Christmas, and it's called The 12 Pains of Christmas. Okay. And if you've never heard it, you should look it up. It's wonderful. It's things like the first thing at Christmas that's such a pain to me is finding a Christmas tree, uh, rigging up the lights, hangovers. Nice. uh, Five months of bills. Um, It's it's really, really great. And it's kind of done in character. It's not like it's just a straight singing song. Um, So I will definitely – I will find it and I will link to it on our eloquent gushing Twitter account Mm. so folks can listen to it because it just – it cracks me up every time I hear it. Nice. Bowling for Soup have got a couple of Christmas albums and they did their own version of The 12 Days of Christmas but like like you're saying with a completely – well, this is in fact a completely different tune uh, called Corner Store on Christmas and it's about going to the corner store and picking up – um, you know, a card for a dollar, picking up batteries for two dollars and so on. And that's quite fun, but it doesn't quite have the... It, well, it's got too much of a chorus in the middle um, of mm-hmm. every single line. And then it doesn't have the five gold rings moment. So it doesn't have something you can hang on to and really relish when you get there. Right. So it's funny the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, come, oh, podcasters... Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Zencaster. Come and record it, backed up in audacity. O oh, come, let us record it. O oh, come, let us record it. O oh, come, let us record it. Podcast. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Matthew. What did one snow- snowman say to the other? I don't know, Matthew. What did one snowman say? Sna- <laughs> 
snay. What did he snay? What did one snowman say to the other? Do you smell carrots? <laughs> okay, that's so bad. It made me laugh really hard. Th- thanks to the Moffats for that one. Um, Christmas cracker jokes are not that good. <laughs> Um, it, 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 they seem to uh, kind of either be not that good or really not that good. Yeah, yeah. It, it is kind of famous that you sell a cracker joke and everyone goes, "Oh!" But actually, they're quite funny. They're generally a good play on words. Yeah. <laughs> so I think for uh, Christmas conversation, you spoke to your co-host for Southern Fried Pop Culture, Kelly Lee. Let's hear what her Christmases are like. All right. Well, Kelly, we wanted to ask all of our eloquent gushing hosts about Christmas. I know you like Christmas. I do. You can't not like Christmas. Well, I mean, you can, but I know you (laughs) and you you like Christmas. So will you tell us a little bit about why you like Christmas, about some of the traditions that you've had about Christmas and your family? Do you have a favorite Christmas memory? Just kind of give us Kelly's Christmas. (laughs) Well, it's funny. Um, being sort of a heathen, I don't have like traditional Christmas values, but I've always loved it. And I think it's because the the season itself is full of lights and music. And I love the Christmas lights. Um, I love driving around looking at Christmas lights. And that's a tradition that I've passed on with my son. So we have fun just driving around and looking at all the lights. And there's something sort of peaceful and serene about that. And I love decorating a Christmas tree, you know, with ornaments that are handmade and tacky as sin um, that don't match, you know, (laughs) especially the the ones that my son made when he was little and that have like little bitty tiny handprints on them or, you know, little ones that we've made together and having a Christmas tree that's covered in lights and sitting in the living room where everything else, all the other lights are turned off and the tree is just kind of glowing and It's the one time of year that I wish I had a fireplace, but I I just love the sort of the glowy lights about the season. And I love the music. I don't love the music that gets played over and over and over again, you know, on the radio and and in the department stores. But I love the kind of music that you can put together yourself. Like I, I have a big holiday playlist and I think there's something about, you know, being at home especially if it would ever snow, which it has never snowed for me on Christmas. And I'm really holding out for that. That's a, that's a wish, but to have, you know, that sort of quiet, peaceful music filled night with a twinkling tree is just very romantic and sweet. And I like it. Um, But probably my top personal Christmas tradition is there's a book I'm sure that does not surprise you. No. But (laughs) when I was in the fifth grade, my English teacher, Miss Stewart, used to still read out loud to us, which I think is a wonderful tradition for older children. And I think it's something that we try to get kids to outgrow to early. But she read us this book out loud, and it became one of my favorite books. And I've read it every Christmas since. And I'm old now. So that's a lot of reading. (laughs) And when my son was born, I've read it to him every Christmas. And it's called The Greatest Christmas Pageant Ever. That sounds vaguely familiar. What, what's it about? It's adorable. And so it's just like a small town Christmas pageant. And there's a family in the town that's like the wrong side of the tracks. And the kids are all wild. And they're like horrible bullies. And they smoke cigars in the church. And the, the terrible kids take over the Christmas pageant. Because they want to be involved um, because somebody tells them that they have like snacks and goodies and stuff at the church and they want to come get involved. And so it's sort of this, this story of how they interpret the, the nativity story and they take over the pageant and, and kind of everything that happens to it. And it's, it's got some funny parts and it's got some sweet parts to it. Um, and, and I've always loved it. And the last paragraph of the book is very sweet and I can't read it out loud makes me cry every single Aww. time and so as soon as my son was old enough he has to take over so I read the book until we get to the last paragraph and then he rolls his eyes 
and hands out his hand and waits and flippantly reads the last paragraph and hands it back with an eye roll because he knows I can't do it because I sit there and cry. <laughs> so even though I have never been part of a Christmas pageant and was not <laughs> raised in any of that, there's something incredibly sweet about that book. Um, and then usually I will reread Little Women this time every year as well. Okay. So, yep. The books and the music and the lights. And I love it. Well, that's wonderful. And, and I love Christmas for a lot of the same reasons too. Thanks for including me in this episode. Okay, so thank you very much, Kelly. It sounds like a very fun Christmas. Yeah, I I really want to know more about this book. I want to find it and read it. Mm. So, other bits of Christmas. Um, there is obviously the Christmas myth. And I'm not talking the religious as- aspects. You can probably tell we're not going into the religious as- aspects. I think you and I both have something of a history of going to church schools and so on. Yes. Um, so yeah, it pummeled into me from a young age. <laughs> so I, I went to a Christmas carol this year and, oh, sorry, I went to a Christmas carol service this year and it really was just, let's go through the story and then sing the songs in a bit of a dirge-like manner. Yes. It just brings back everything of, oh, this is such a good story, but they kill it every year. <laughs> they do it to death. <laughs> um, but there is the myth, the... Um, what I would call Father Christmas. The visits on Christmas Eve, the coming down the chimney, what you would call Santa Claus, I assume? Yes. Yes. Okay. When did you learn the Santa Verite, the truth about Father Christmas? I never actually believed in Santa. My mom, Oh, piss I, I, you I did. Know. I did not. My mom was very, very adamant about this because she was a single mom. And she did not want to teach me that it was okay for a strange man to come into the house. Okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> I can see her logic there, yeah. <laughs> she was very, very adamant about that. And so I, w- I never believed in Christmas. Now, <laughs> sorry, I never believed in Santa. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. we, we did, you know, always play with it a lot. You know, even growing up, especially when I was in like middle and high school, there would always be gifts that my parents held back and weren't wrapped and under the tree yet. And they would put them out on Christmas Eve night and they would say they were from Santa just because it's a fun thing to do. And it, yeah. it's one of those things where they would want there to always be some level of surprise. Mm. Um, I know a lot of families, I think don't put any presents under their tree at all until Christmas Eve night. But mm-hmm. we always, as we bought presents for people, for other you know, friends and family, we would bring them home, wrap them, put them under the tree. Okay. And so I would always see that I had presents under the tree and then Christmas morning would come around and I would have even more presents under the tree and they were all Aww. Santa. Um, <laughs> nice. Even though I never believed in Santa and I always knew full well who Santa was. Hmm. Um, sometimes I wish that I had believed in that, that magic, but at the same time, I'm glad I never went through the heartbreak of learning that my parents lied to me. That's fair. Un- undermining your belief in them forever. <laughs> I, I there was an article about that this year. I don't believe it. I, I think kids get over it. Oh, I, I think they do too. I yeah. mean, it's been so pervasive that yeah, they they would have to. Did you believe in in Santa Claus or I guess Father Christmas? Um, I did. I think up until oh, six, seven, something like that. Um, certainly, it was before we moved, so it must have been around six or seven. I think I just remember questioning it without talking about it and then knowing because we hang stockings in our rooms and just oh. knowing that it was my mum coming in and putting stuff in a stocking okay just, is is hanging them in your rooms a uk thing or a, a vos family thing i i think it's a uk thing okay because I, I i i've had the conversation again thinking about thought i was going to talk to you about this that other people that's generally what they do although there is a bit of a move to hang it in the living room so everyone's just hanging together and so on. Yeah, I've always seen, at least in the US, they're all hung together on the mantle. If there's no yeah. mantle, they're all hung on off a shelf on the wall or something like that. Um, but I've always seen the whole families together in mm. one place. Which I can, and that's a nice way to do it, particularly because you're keeping it by the fireplace and by the chimney and so on. I will say, though, word of caution... If you mm. actually use your fireplace, don't put the candy in the stockings <laughs> until <laughs> Christmas Eve night. 
after you've turned your fireplace off. What? I mean, I'm not saying I've learned from the experience or anything. (laughs) Oh my goodness! I the first year I moved back home as an adult, um, and my mom and I decided that we missed doing Christmas together, and we decided to continue doing Christmas stockings with each other. I mean, we don't live together or anything. It's just we have Christmas stockings at my house. I hang them up, and then we she brings all the stuff over, and Christmas Eve night, she fills up my stocking, and I fill up hers, and, and we do it that way. Um, and, and the first year, I had them hanging on my mantle, and I used my fireplace. I had a gas fireplace <laughs> in my living room, and I didn't even think about it. Um, just because that's where stockings go. And I had been filling it up over the season, and my mom loves chocolate. She loves chocolate-covered cherries, and she loves those chocolate oranges. And so I had put several of those in the stocking. And then all of a sudden, like a week before Christmas, I just – I don't know why. I just – I looked up, and the fireplace was on. And I was like, oh, it's getting really warm in here. (laughs) <laughs> and then I just had this thought, oh, my God, there's chocolate in there. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, so there was no longer individual candy in the stocking. It was all, like, one solid thing. In the shape of the boots of the stocking. <laughs> yes. Um, needless to say, we don't have those stockings anymore. We bought new ones <laughs> after that. So yeah, just just a word of caution. If you're gonna put candy, probably fresh fruit, anything like that, don't do it until after you turn the fireplace off on Christmas Eve. That's all I'm saying. Um, when you say chocolate oranges, do you mean like the Terry's chocolate orange that's the size of an orange? Uh, yes. I don't know the brand, but okay. it's it's wrapped in foil, and you have to like slam it down on something to like make all of the little orange slices Mm -hmm. split apart otherwise it's kind of like a solid ball Mm. but it actually looks like an orange and all those little pieces come out and it's just made out of orange flavored chocolate yeah yeah we have them over here i i thought that was an absolute uk thing i did not realize you had them um it's a more recent thing I don't Mm. remember having them as a child. I started seeing them, I think, when I was in high school, and now they're a little more prevalent. Like, there are different flavors now. They have them. There's milk chocolate, and there's dark chocolate, and then they still have them in the shape of an orange, but they're, like, mint chocolate. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and I I saw, like, a raspberry one, but it's still in the shape of an orange. (laughs) We, uh, they sell them in, um... Like a box with all the different chocolates randomly in it, but all the chocolates in it they're individually wrapped, but they are all individual segments. But oh, they come in, okay. they come, but they come in different flavors. So you get dark chocolate, milk chocolate, popping oh, candy, raspberry. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, I o- I only ever see the whole oranges here. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to record a show with Mandy Kay. Hey! Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh Alongside Matthew Vose. Hey, did you steal the sleigh? Hey, Mandy. <laughs> hey, Matthew. <laughs> How do you drain your vegetables at Christmas? I don't. So, Matthew, how do you drain your vegetables at Christmas? With an advent colander. <laughs> Thank oh, okay. you to Let's... Katie's SB for that uh, that one. <laughs> well, so, see, now, here's an interesting thing. I have never in my life had an advent calendar. Really? Really. I didn't even know what they were until probably five years ago. Now, that's not just a, a British thing. There are advent calendars over there. I know people who have them. Yes, I think... So you're Advent well, calendar deprived. New podcast, called it. <laughs> I think Advent is comes about from a specific religious flavor that was mm-hmm. different from what I grew up with. And ah, I think okay. that's Got probably it. why. Um, but it never even occurred to me that it was something that just people did to count down to Christmas. Mm-hmm. Because Advent is a very specific thing. Um, so yeah, I, I never had an Advent calendar growing up. And, yeah, I, I think it's fun now to look and see all of the different ways that people do that countdown. Mm-hmm. But I have never done that. I am a big fan of advent calendars. I, I 
uh, think they're great. I grew up with them. Just it was a card advent calendar, and you open it, and you got a picture of a star or a stocking or a wise man or something every day. Um, I never grew up with the the chocolate ones that are the main <laughs> sort you get now. Right. But I, I I've always gotten them for like people that were brought into me at work and friends and. Uh, my fiance, it, the, we started going out on the second of December, so that first year we didn't have one. But then obviously it had been we'd been together a good while when the next Christmas came around. So I bought her an advent calendar. Like, hey, here's I think I got her a Lego advent calendar that first year. Nice. You got a, diff, a bit of Lego and you built up a little town scene. It was all very nice. And she had like advent calendars weren't a thing in her life at that point, so she was like, "Oh, oh, this is a thing we do." Oh. So we then had to trail up and down a high street as she, she tried to find a shop that had an advent calendar for me. <laughs> now, I do believe that, that you got a very nice advent calendar this year. Yes. Uh, well, stemming from that first year, she now always makes uh, a very, or gets a very nice advent calendar for me each year. So this year I got a rum advent calendar with a little dram of rum in every day, which is lovely. But previously, she's actually made an advent calendar, so a, a large knitted thing with, with 24 pockets in it, and then she's bought different things to fill it. So I've had uh, nice chocolates in one year, and I had um, little Lego minifigs another year. I had little Star Wars toys another year. Fun little things. Okay. Hmm. Now, I have to ask you a question about this rum advent calendar. <laughs> are you drinking the rum every day, or are you saving it up for a really big glass of rum uh, on Christmas? Not every day. It's It's different rum every day. Okay. So, oh, I had a bad one the other day. No, um, so so it's every few days I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll have a rum. So I'll make it. And because it's only a small bottle's worth, um, I'm making a smaller size rum than I would normally would. But then I'm having two or three of an evening. Um, okay. And then I was very tired the other day. I was like, oh, I'll have a rum. And I opened one and tried to a little bit. I was like, oh, that's really tasty. Really like looking forward to this. And then I put the wrong mixer in it because I just was not paying attention. Oh, no. Yeah. So, you know, hey ho. <laughs> boozy Christmas. Yeah, basically. Yeah, we do have very boozy Christmases over here. It's a good thing. Yeah. You were talking about uh, about chocolates. I was going to tell you a thing that we have a, a Christmas tradition over here where my uncle, uh, my my mum's brother, always bought us um, these sort of, oh, what are they, probably nine inches high chocolate Santa Clauses by a company called Lint who make this gorgeous sort of very creamy chocolate. Um, and he did that every year. Everyone got one of these chocolate father christmases and then he passed away a few years ago and now and, and that was the same year my nephew was born so now i'm the uncle so i've basically just taken his tradition and i now buy everyone one of these every year oh that's lovely and it, it is because we we do them at easter as well everyone gets a, a lint um easter rabbit so and it's it's just a nice tradition to keep going and it was just oh suddenly i'm the uncle i get to do the tradition i'm stealing it he had oh. a good idea and it's now my idea <laughs> yeah i think that's wonderful hmm I have no children in my family, so I don't get to do any any fun stuff like that. I mean, that's why my mom and I do stockings with each other, so that we can, you know, continue the yeah. Christmas magic with each other. But there, there's no children, so nice. It's it's nice to have those ongoing traditions that you, that you get to enjoy, and it, you can be a bit silly and childish with with Christmas because it's yeah fun. Everything about it is fun. That's one of the things I love about the season so much is the movies have this good moral center about being good to people and taking time to enjoy your life rather than your work or what seems important but isn't. Uh, the, the music is almost universally let's be happy. Let's enjoy what we're doing together. Even the the you know the Ramones Christmas song is I don't want to fight tonight. Um, there's a British song called Fairy Tale of New York, which is about I don't like you, but it's Christmas, so whatever. <laughs> okay. It's it's just a time of year when it, it is about being good to fellow man yeah. and enjoying yourself. Absolutely. Hmm. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Matthew. What do you call a fly with no wings? I have no idea, Matthew. What do you call a fly with no wings? A walk. Okay, why is that a Christmas <laughs> joke? Well, because you get non-Christmassy jokes and some crackers. Okay. Who knows? But, you know, that was from my nephew. Aww. Who, my, my sister did say, like, he's not good at jokes. Don't ask him for this. But that was the one he sent over, so he enjoyed it from his cracker. When, that's, <laughs> that is great. Yeah. So you weren't brought up believing in Father Christmas. Did you do any of the tradition around that, leaving out 
uh, stuff for him to come down the chimney and eat? Oh, no, I was not going to waste perfectly good Christmas cookies on somebody (laughs) who wasn't real. Okay, but it's cookies you leave out. Yes. Here, it would be milk and cookies. Okay. Do you, would you do other people leave anything for the reindeer? I don't know. Okay. I've I've never heard that, but that doesn't mean anything because clearly I know nothing. <laughs> Cuz that that is another big cultural difference. So obviously in the in the Santa Verite thing, it's the dad who gets to have the cookies and milk. Mm-hmm. Over here you leave out mince pies and brandy. Oh. To keep him warm and keep going on his cold journey. Okay. <laughs> it's a very clever thing by parents, I'm sure. <laughs> and and probably a carrot for um, the reindeer. Interesting. I, I suspect that's a thing so the parents can then nibble on the carrot or grate it a bit and be like, oh, hey, see, they ate some of it. <laughs> okay. I, I think that's weird, but that's... Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> you do you, UK. <laughs> I've known people who do like their parents leave snowy footprints or this kind of thing around. I think that, that just sounds like a lot of effort. Well, it's kind of like now, and I don't know if you guys do this over there, but all of the rage here is Elf on a Shelf. Mm, yes, yes, people do, and it, it's kind of gotten ridiculous with all of the parents trying to one up all of the other parents on what this elf will do. <laughs> And and then you get Sarah Michelle Gellar, who has both the time and the money to do some impressive stuff with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think it's weird. But that's because mm. we didn't have that when I was a kid. That I mean, that's a very recent development. Yeah. And and I can see the, the fun of it, of, of like with Father Christmas, believing in the magic and the excitement of mm-hmm. it. But it is also like, wait, so things are moving around during the... During the night and coming into my house? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mandy. Oh, goodness. Hey, Matthew. <laughs> who delivers presents to baby sharks? I don't know, Matthew. Who does deliver presents to baby sharks? Santa Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you to uh, Isabel Sowerby for that one. <laughs> I basically sent out a message to her like, hey, friends with kids? Do they like cracker jokes? What do they like? (laughs) I think my favorite thing about these cracker jokes is that they're so bad that you're not even trying to steal them for yourself. You're giving the people credit who gave them to you. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's fair. The, it, as I say, it's absolute tradition. I have no idea how to explain it other than it's a nice thing you do at the beginning of a meal. <laughs> it sounds fun, honestly. I think it would be a nice mm. thing. I, I kind of wish I had grown up doing it just because it is a tradition that you get to do with your family. And family traditions mm. are the best. Yes. And and like I say, Christmas, absolutely a time of tradition. It's nice to keep these things going. Mm-hmm. Every year, basically. And and having the excuse to do it every year, not finding a day that you can all fit it in and get together and do stuff. Yeah. Getting together, enjoying time with family that's not, oh, I've got to work later. I've got to go to the gym later. I've got to. Because for the most part, everything shuts down at this time of year. Yeah, it does. So the fire's running down and I need to go and get more drink because I've got more rum to open today. Uh, we both hope that you have the very happiest of Christmases and that the start of 2018 is everything you want it to be. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. Now bring us a figgy pudding. Now bring us some figgy pudding. Now bring us some figgy pudding and a cup of good cheer. Good tidings we bring 
to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. So bring some right here. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy 